What's going on, people? Uh, I hear you guys like Dragon Ball and you like Roblox, or at least your life has crumbled and it's gotten so low that you play Roblox. But you don't know what to play, but you want to play Dragon Ball games. But you've searched endlessly and you haven't found any good ones. You keep finding these like ones with like 4,000 people playing, but like nothing's going on in the game, you know, and it's like a terrible game. So in the last few months, I've been playing a lot of these and I've narrowed them down to three games. And you may have watched my tutorial before on Final Remastered, and we're going to be talking about the game today and a few others and two others and so um, if you don't if you disagree please rip me part in the comments I need the interaction please please and so first is Dragon Ball Final Stand and I'm gonna whoop some audio up on and some gameplay on the table here in a second Dragon Ball Final Stand it's an older game it's been around since 2016 and it no longer receives updates unlike the two others in our tier list here and so it's a relatively like old style of game and the movement is like ridiculously rigid and you'll see that it has this old Roblox look to it and it doesn't really feel like a game like now like like Roblox Studio has progressed so far that it feels like fleshed out actual like AAA title games some of these games you know like for instance Grand Peace even though it's grindy as hell it uh it definitely does feel like a well established Roblox game it does feel like you know a very well mended and produced and so I think because of that, Dragon Ball Final Stand is one of those games that like it used to be really good back in the day, and that's why people still like, play it, is because they return for the nostalgia of it or the fact that they just have good stuff or they know how to play it. But I think this is gonna be the lowest on our list here, and we're gonna be working up to the best game that I found. But this is definitely it has a lot of content, and if you like kind of just going around beating up random bandits, you know, of different variety for coins and crap this is definitely gonna be the game for you and but it is an older style of game and I think the next two are gonna be better but it is a more simple style of grinding the other two are basically the same thing over and over when you're grinding for levels but this does have different missions and more variety and I guess more of a story really I, I guess but it is it is still lower because of the combat and the PvP is what you really come for for these games because you want to fight other Saiyans or other races or whatever and for this they do offer a very limited selection of races and it's like Dragon Ball Z not really Dragon Ball Super and Super is the new stuff and people like the new stuff you know you, you want to go Super Saiyan Blue and all that so I put this game on the lowest part of our tier list here we have Dragon Ball Final Remastered this is a pretty decent game with a weirdly low player count it has like a hundred people and I'll explain why I think this this game is, you may have seen my video on it before, it's actually my most viewed video, thank you guys for watching the video, like seriously, it's weirdly cool that I actually did well on something for once, um, that was really sad. But this game is honestly really good, I really do enjoy it, and I think it's one of, it's my favorite Dragon Ball game, but it's definitely not the best, uh, and I think the next one's going to show off that, maybe not too well, but it will show off that. And so, the thing with this game is that it's produced really well, it looks great, has the sounds, it has the diff every single form you could ever want, even has Ultra Instinct. It has the diff you know, some of the different races, it has like Namekian and Ecursion, and Human, and Saiyan of course. And you can, you know, you can remove your tail, take off your tail, it has all the customization in the world you'd want, you can get scouters, you can get different clothes, and... But the issue, and the combat's really fun, the VFX look really good, um, all the different attacks are really well established and are definitely different and you use them differently so you can kind of create your own tactics and combos and all that. So there is one giant issue with this game is that you cannot complete this game alone. And in my tutorial I state this, that you do definitely do need people to help you with this game. It is not the kind of game that you can just play alone because the first boss in this game is going to whoop you like into the next month. Raditz will absolutely destroy you and he will like flatten the earth with you. He will turn you into a paste with his fists. And so because of that, you need somebody high level to beat him up a little bit and so he's really low, and then you come and just, you know, nail him in the face. Um, unlike the show, which he gets clapped in, like, the first episode. But, um, if it wasn't, and that's, like, the only way really to get XP besides going to, like, the time chamber, but, like, the hyperbolic time chamber in the game, which you can really only do until you're, like, level... What is it? Uh, you can really only do, like, until you're, like, level 140 anyway, and then it really doesn't do too much XP-wise for you. So, it doesn't really make a difference. So... Fighting the boss is the only way, but the bosses are so ridiculously hard that it makes grinding really difficult. At least for me. Every time I go to the game and I try to level up so I can get more forms and fight people with more abilities, I always get stuck in this pattern of not being able to defeat the bosses and people trying to help me, but then 
I'm too weak to be able to finish them off or do any significant damage, even with going like false super saiyan or something. So it's definitely the biggest flaw with the game, and I think that's why it has 150 people usually. Unlike the next game we're going to talk about, which is our final game, and that would be Xeno Online. And for our final game of the day, it is Xeno Online, and I say that with a breath, a breath of exhaustion, as this game is exhausting. It is definitely the best current Dragon Ball game, because we still have Dragon Ball Online Generations, and I will touch on that um, in a second. But Xeno Online is a very simple yet complex game. So Dragon Ball Online Generations aims to be the Dragon Ball equivalent of Grand Peace. And if you know Grand Peace, it's like supposed, supposed to be the hardcore... Um, it's supposed to be like the hardcore One Piece game that takes hours of grinding to get literally anything. It's supposed to be like realistically proportionate to the series or whatever. So it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Uh, basically, it's just a hardcore Dragon Ball game, and it's really good because of that. And a lot of people like it, and it has a very consistent community. It has 500 people for a few reasons. 500 people that like actively play it. This is my uh, guess. Uh, my you know eyeball average. And so a lot of the time, you know, and so the issue with the you roll into the game, right? You have a 12% chance of landing saying you don't get to pick. <laughs> the last two games, you get to pick your race. <laughs> no. Uh, and if you want to pick your race, you used to have to pay 250 Robux, but now they give you four rolls to re-roll your race. And you're thinking that, oh, I can just do that from the menu, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to die three times in-game to just be able to go to King Kai, to Snake's Way. Then you have to fly for about five minutes to get to King Kai's planet, then ask... King Kai and it's like somebody on the planet forgot their name, like King Yema, Yema or something. She's just on the planet for some reason, and you click her, and then you can reroll your character, and that is an excruciatingly long time because you can't just hit reset character. No, they disable your sets. So you have to fly for like three, four minutes um, to the edge of the map, fall off, die, right, three times. So that's gonna be about like what, like six, seven, eight minutes. Then, right. You're going to have to um, spend like five minutes flying on Snake's Way. So you're going to spend about 12 minutes probably or approximately uh, getting to King Kai's planet. Then you reroll your character, right? Then hopefully you get Saiyan. If not, you have three more chances, right? So that's like four in total. So that's going to be what, like, let's do some quick math. So it's like, I don't know, like 50 minutes basically. It's going to take you like probably like almost an hour to just use those four rolls instead of just going doing it from the menu where you just reroll your race. So it does like tedious things like that. Stupidly tedious things like that, or it really drags this game down, because this game has a lot of potential. Like you can even like curl your Saiyan tail in, which you may have saw me do on screen, and like you can do like really weirdly specific things like that. And then that's what makes it really cool, because it definitely is very immersive. Like they have to, they have basically every race. They have like a Krosen, which is like Freezer's race. They have uh, Jiren's race. They have Saiyans, of course. They have humans. They have androids, which you can like you have like a one ten percent chance to become from a uh, human. You can get learn like Destructo Disc. You can learn Kamehameha. You can learn basically every move you want to. And, but the thing is, is that, like, you grind so much for very basic moves, and, like, for instance, like, you know, the destructive disc, you have to grind for, like, a few hours for, which is, like, a very basic move, you should learn that literally at the first five minutes, I feel like, and you basically grind for these very basic moves, and things that we've already seen before in other games, and, you know, in the media, and it doesn't feel like you've accomplished much, and it feels like you're not really you're working a lot for not very much that changes the gameplay all too much because all the attacks are very similar but this game is definitely the best because it has such an active community and the community is very fun to get involved with discord calls especially because everybody just hangs out in their discord uh woken studios is discord with people who produce this game and so because of that uh you know and you have the different races and uh, attributes to those races and the community is very strong with this game uh, very toxic too, which is the best part, I think. And so for that, and because of, even though it is a lot of grinding, for not much output, even though it takes like 20 hours to get like Super Saiyan or whatever, I think it's still definitely worth playing and grinding because it definitely like, you know, uh, I think the combat's fun enough, the community is good, and there's active events, still active updates, just like Final Remastered, not Final Stand. Uh, and so there's a lot going on in the game. It's constantly being changed. They're actually just hired like mo like modelers and things at the time of this video, which is uh, October 9th, 2021. So there's a lot to like here, but there are a lot of negatives. And I think overall that makes it the best game out of all of them, just because of the fact that the active community, fun gameplay, and really good graphics and just effects and all that. I didn't show that much in my gameplay, but I feel like I showed enough that maybe encompasses uh, what you'd want to play. Alright, so, finally, for the last few 20 seconds, 
Dragon Ball Online Generations. That is an upcoming game. Going to be wiped, completely wipe out these three and player accounts. Suck them all into there. They're going to have like 20,000 people playing, I bet. And this game is the best Dragon Ball game. It has not out yet, though. Might, not, might come out the 15th. I'll definitely make a video on it if it does. 15th of October. But for right now, that will definitely be the best game, hopefully. Um, and so it's a very structurally stable game. I'll slap some images up right now. It looks great. has all the races. even has Majin. Um, and so there's a lot to do in the, in the game. It's not like super grindy, but it, and, it, and you have like a lot to do. There's different forms for every race. It's going to be a great game, and it's definitely going to wipe the floor with all these games. But until that day comes, you have these three games, and I am no soap, and hopefully I helped you out here. Let me know what you think. See ya.